Ever wondered how games like City Builders, Survival Sandboxes and Farming Sims let you place buildings perfectly on a grid? In this video we are building that exact system from scratch. I show you how to create a grid-based building system with a live preview and we will even handle buildings of all different shapes and sizes. By the end you will have the foundation for your own city building or survival game. Let's dive in! I have already prepared a scene for this. In the hierarchy I have made a few sections to keep everything organized. I also have made a floor game object. In our assets folder I have made a few subfolders. I also have imported some 3D models for our buildings. You can see that we will use three different shapes. And we also have a few materials for the buildings, the floor and also for the preview. Those two preview materials are special because they have transparency. You can achieve this with workflow mode specular and surface type transparent. Then in the base map you will be able to set the alpha value of the color. Before we code the system let me explain what components we are going to build here. First of all we will have a grid. This will hold the cells which we can build on. On the grid we can build Buildings. The building will be the finished placed object. Buildings that are not yet built are represented as building preview. A building preview will be moved by the mouse position and can either be green or red, depending if it can be built or not. We don't want to mix the before build and after build functionality of the building. That's why we have separate scripts for the building and the preview. Inside the preview, and also the building, we have a building model. The building model handles the 3D model and the shape. To represent the shape of our building model, we will have so-called building shape units. Here represented as little black circles. Those units will form the shape of the building and will help us to get all grid positions of the shape. To bring that all together, we will have the building system. Let's create all those scripts first. And now we can start with the building model. In the building model script we have a reference to the wrapper. We use a wrapper here for our 3D model. This way you can have many 3D objects inside the wrapper and they are all handled as one object. This way we can for example rotate everything at once. We will also have a rotation property which will give us faster access to the wrapper's rotation. We will also have an array of all our building shape units under this model. Then in the wake we will get all shape units that are children of this game object. The model will have two more methods. The rotate method which will just rotate the wrapper and also the shape units which will later be located inside the wrapper. And the get all building positions method. This method will give us the positions of all building shapes. With those values we can later check under each shape unit if there is a cell and if it is empty or not. Now let's go back to Unity and build our building model prefabs. For each 3D model you will need one building model. There you will be able to define the shape and also compose your building out of multiple 3D models if you want. Inside our first model we have the wrapper. Inside the wrapper we will place our 3D model. For the first building we will use the 1x1 one one model. We can give it the blue material. The building model parent object will have the building model script with the reference to the wrapper. Also inside the wrapper we will create a building shape unit and give it the building shape unit script. The script will be empty and is only there so that we can easier find the shape unit. It's faster to search the object for components than for tags. We then make the shape unit a prefab. We then also make the building model 1 a prefab. Now we can repeat this for the building model number 2 and 3. For the second building 
you can see that we will use two shape units because it will be placed on two grid cells. The shape unit has to be in the middle of each cell. The third building model will have three shape units. You can better see how I have placed them when I switch to the orthographic view. I hope you get the logic how to place them. Great, our building models are done. Next, let's create our grid. Before we dive into the grid script, we need to add a constant value to our building system so that we can use it in our project. That is the cell size. The cell size is the width and height of each cell in our building system. Our cells will have the size of 1. We will need it later in the grid script. Now in the grid script, we create two serialized fields for the width and the height of the grid. The grid will consist of many grid sets. Let's create the class for this in this file. The building grid cell class will hold the reference to a building if there is one on this cell. And will also have methods to set a building and to check if the cell is empty. Our grid will now have a 2D array of grid cells. In the start method, we set the grid up. Then we need a few more methods. The setBuilding method will take a list of world positions and will set the grid cells that are at those world positions to contain the building. A building with a larger shape than 1 by 1 will occupy more than one grid cell and therefore more than one grid cell will contain the building as value. Before we can set the value of a grid cell, we have to convert our world position to a grid position. We do this with this world to grid position method, which takes a world position and returns a tuple with the x and the y value. We then use this new grid position to set the cell at this position to our building. We do this with a for each loop for all the building positions. Another method we need is the canBuild method, which will check for all building positions if there is a grid cell under position and if it is empty. If one of those positions doesn't have an empty grid cell, we return false. Otherwise, we return true at the end. We are almost done with the grid script. The last thing we want here is to visualize our grid in the editor. It is not needed, but it will help you to see where each grid cell is. We do this with the onDrawGizmos method provided by Unity. We first set a color and then make sure that there is something to draw. We then draw horizontal lines and vertical lines. We use the cell size value from the building system here so that we know the exact size. This will be helpful to visualize our grid in the editor. In the editor, we can enable the gizmos in play mode. This will most likely throw an error in Unity 6.1 as there is a bug. Nothing you should worry about. The error will disappear when you disable gizmos again. Under views, we will create a grid game object. We give it the building grid component and set the width and the height. We can move the grid to the lower left and adjust the values. It works! Cool! Next, let's implement the building data. 
The building data will be a scriptable object and will therefore have a create asset menu attribute at the top. It will also hold the building model. In the real game, you can store other data related to the building here. We could have a description or a cost for example. We won't need it in this tutorial, but I will keep it here as an example. Now in the editor, we can create the data for our three buildings. To each data, you can assign the created building model here. As I already mentioned, the description and cost is not important and only for demonstration purpose. Next, let's create our building preview, so the script that will show the building before we actually build it. Inside we need an enum with two states, positive and negative. For each state we need the according material as reference. We also need a few fields, the state, the data, the currently instantiated model. And then, as well, two private lists with all renderers and all colliders of the instantiated building model. In the setup method, we first save our data and then we instantiate the model. We then get all the renderers and colliders of the model. We want to disable all the colliders next. Then we also want to set the material, but for this we will use an own method. The set preview material method will take a state and will change the material based on that state. It will go through all renderers and look for all materials of each renderer and then will change them to either the positive material or the negative. Then we need a method to change the state of the preview. It will check if the new state is the current state. If it is, we return. Otherwise, we set the state and change the material. We also won't be able to rotate the preview. We do this with the rotate method. This is the preview script. We will use it later in the building system. Next, we also want to implement the building script, so the script for the building after it was built. Here we also will have a setup method, which takes the data and also the rotation in which the building should be built. Inside, the model is instantiated and rotated by the rotation value. For this tutorial, we don't need other things here. But in a real game you could store your cost and description here and also implement some functionality for the building after it was built. This way we have this clean separation between the preview script which is messy and only relevant for the building system and the building script which is clean and only contains stuff relevant for the building itself. In Unity we then create an object for the preview and give it the preview script. In the script, we have to assign the positive and negative material. After this, we drag the object into the prefabs folder. We also create the object for the building. We just give it the script and then we already can drag it into the prefabs folder. Now we can bring everything together in the building system script. Let's start with a few references. We first will have references to all three building data. We also need the preview prefab and the building prefab. And last but not least we need a reference to the grid. Oh, and we will also need a private reference to the instantiated preview. In the update method we will first need our mouse position. We will get this with the get mouse world position method. We want the position on a plane so that we drag the objects on the floor and not somewhere in the air. Therefore we create a ray and a plane and return the point where the ray hits the plane. Back in the update we use the new method to get the mouse position. We then can check if the preview is null. If it's not, we will do something here, but if it is null, 
we have to create the preview. If we press the one key on the keyboard, we will create a preview with the first data at the mouse position. To create the preview, we need another method. The method will just instantiate the preview prefab and set it up. Inside the update, we want to also be able to create previews for our other data. Let's use the 2 key and the 3 key for this. In the real game, we could have menu for selecting buildings, but for testing, this is enough. When we have a preview already, we want to move it around and change its state. We will handle all of this in the handle preview method. In this, we will first set the position of the preview to the mouse. We then get all building positions of the preview, so all the positions of the shape unit. We then will check if we can build on all those positions. We use the method inside the grid class for this. If we cannot build, we just change the state of the preview to negative. If we can build, we set the position to the snapped center position. This is the center of all buildings positions snapped to the grid. It is a bit hard to explain, but we basically calculate with our shape where the center of the building on the grid should be. Here we cannot just use the mouse position because we want to place the preview exactly on the grid so that it snaps to the grid. We then also set the state of the preview to positive. Then we also check if the mouse was pressed. And if it was pressed, this means that we want to place the building at this position. Let's create the place building method for this. Inside we first create and set up the building. Then we set all grid positions where we want to build a building on to have the building as a value. Last we destroy the preview and set preview to null. At the end of the handle preview method we also want to check if the R key was pressed and if it was, we want to rotate the preview. In Unity we can create the building system as a game object and assign the script to it. We then assign all the references and after this we are ready to hit the play button. Now in play mode we can press 1, 2 or 3 to create a new building preview. We can drag it around and when it is over the grid where it can be built it is green and snaps to the grid. When we drag it somewhere where it cannot be built it follows the mouse and is red. When we click we place it and when we press R we rotate it. Perfect, everything works like expected. Now with this system you can build your city builder or farming game. With a similar approach you could even create an inventory. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like. It helps me a lot. Thank you for watching and see you next time.